I want to take you a couple of years back to my office in Mexico City. I was sitting down, regular day, and I received a message from my brother. He said, hey, check this out. We're going to do this. And I clicked the link, and this is what he showed. So after watching this, I said, I gave you a call and said, there's no way I'm hurling out of a plane with a parachute, jumping out and just trying to be accurate enough to get into that cave, into a cavern. And if I actually can do it, there's no way I'm going to open that parachute and uh, get down safely. And she said, don't worry about it. We're not jumping out of a plane. I'm like, great. I'm, not, I'm still not going to do that. Like, and there's no parachute. There's a rope. We're rappelling down. I said, that sounds reasonable. And um, it's here a couple of hours away from Monterey. It's in San Luis Potosí. It's called Sotano de las Golondrinas. And you should do it, because I'm doing it, and our father is doing it. And I'm thinking, well, I don't want to do it. Right? And I want to explain you the kind of person that I am. By the age of 23, I had graduated from my master's in financial economics in England. I worked in a dream job of any economist, the central bank, where I printed money. And I assessed risks for a living. This is what I did every day. Data will come in from all around the world and would say, let's make sure that those red things don't go over the yellow lines. And that's what I did every single day of my life. And it concluded in the following statements, that Governor Carson's would go in front of a crowd like you and say, the risk of inflation outlook is as following. We should do this thing for this, and we shouldn't do these things for this. And I was very good at it. I was really good at it. Here you go. That's me receiving my title. That's me in the central bank. And then again, that's me in a 100 peso bill. <laughs> I'm still working on the sign. I think the beard, I'm not that quite sure about it. So, I was very good at doing what I did. I, was, I participated in the G20. I went to the Pinos. And I met President Peña Nieto. And I was so good at doing what I did that I didn't want to be in the front row because there was a risk of me saying hi to all these politicians that I'm not interested in saying hi. That's why I'm right there, second row. I'm telling you I'm good at this. So, I'm thinking to myself, what's the risk, what's the benefit, and why should I do it? And I couldn't find a reason to do it. An honest reason why I should take a risk, leave my comfort zone, and step into a hole. This cavern, 400 meters, there's no way. I'm the perfect example of what economists call a risk-adverse individual. If it's too risky, I'm not doing it. If it's too costly, I'm not doing it. I'd rather stay home, watch Netflix, and have a great time. So it came to mind two things. There were two pivotal points in my process. First, this is my uncle Hector, my cousin's father. She's right here. She's coming from LA. And he said to me, you have to live as if you were dying. And he said this right before he passed away. He had terminal cancer, and one of the first things he did after getting his chemo and trying to survive. He ran a triathlon, and he finished it. And he puked six times, and he was two hours after pretty much everybody else. But he finished it. And I was talking to him for the last time, and I knew it was his first last time, and he knew it as well. And he said, if there's anything in my life that is worth sharing, is that you should live as if you were dying. And to me, that time was like, yeah, my uncle said YOLO to me before YOLO was a thing, right? You only live once, thrive. If you don't risk anything, you gain nothing. That's what it sounded to me. And I really never put attention to it until this time, which I'm thinking, should I take a risk? And the second thing is that I, I saw this quote. It says, if you're risk averse, as I am, you stay within your comfort zone, forsaking the potential challenges that might inspire you to new ideas and new experiences. 
And then I'm thinking, wow, I'm really risk averse. I don't want to do this. But my father is doing it, my brother is doing it, and that's the only chance that I'm going to do this with my family. So I decided, I call him back and say, okay, let's do this. A couple of months passed between this, right? And I want you to give you the perspective of how it is. You can just click play. This is the hole. This is the cavern. That's how it looks from the top. It's amazing. And I was really, really afraid. I've never done anything like this in my whole life. I'm not very outdoorsy. I'm not very risky. And there I was, sitting near my brother and a couple of friends and my father. And I said, okay, we're going to do this. Let's do it right. Just for you to get a scale of how much this was deep, the Eiffel Tower, it's around 1,000 feet. The Empire State Building, it's 1,400 feet. The Sotano de las Golondrinas is 1,400 feet deep. So you could take the Empire State Building, put it inside, and only see the tip. If this didn't do that trick, here's a picture from the Sotano from inside. Have you seen my brother? He's right there. Right there. Okay, that, that's him. That's him, right there. He's swinging from a rope. And I was about to do that. So I geared up, say, let's do this. This is my descent. That piece of metal was holding my life, all my dreams, all that I inspired to be, all that I was. And I was hanging from a rope, that rope of which I can see the end of it. And I was very afraid. And at some point, the rope started moving from one side to another. And sometimes I felt that I was going to die. So I held my, myself to the rope with my both hands, my two legs. And if I could, I would have grabbed the rope with my teeth. Do you believe me? Here, there's a picture. That's not how you're supposed to go down. That's how I went down. It took me 25 minutes to get there. And I finally got there. I was with my father. We had some coffee. We went to the Oxo. I'm just kidding. And we, we really enjoyed the time down there. I signed that paper that says I'm one of the 50 people in a year that goes down. And as the time went through, I said, okay, I'm in this hole, I'm in this cavern, and I don't know how am I going to get out. <laughs> right? That's another thing. I, you think the challenging thing is getting down? Nope. That's not the challenging thing part. So then again, they all gear up, they all go up, and there's this thing you go pull up, and then you pull yourself up, you pull your legs, and you do this a thousand times. And it, I did it, and it was challenging, and at some point, they all left, and I was there, 250 meters up a rope, swinging from side to side, the, the rope was jumping, and I'm, I was sure that I was going to die. I was certain that I was going to die, and that was the end of me. And when you're dying, you get philosophical. And I said, okay, there's three things I can do now to save myself. First of all, I can get down, wait until someone builds an elevator and me to get out of here. I can stay here in my comfort zone and really just stay here. I'm relatively safe. Nothing's going to happen to me except that the bird's going to get down and probably eat me or something. And I'm relatively safe. And the third option is I can pull myself out of the situation that I got myself into. So I was really afraid, and I decided I'm going to go up. And I went up 10 meters, and I was tired again. And I did it again and again and again. And at some point of me feeling that I was going to die, I recorded this video. <laughs> Hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I'm tired. I'm in the middle of nowhere. I've been through all this. And I still have to go up this. It's a good 150 meters up. Or more. I'm tired. I'm sweaty. I'm afraid. The jump is run, jumping around. Vamos a darle para que llegar hasta arriba sin, sin problema alguno. Más bien, superando todos los problemas. Let's go up. 
facing all the challenges that I have to face. Just get me out of this hole, out of this cavern that I got myself into, right? And I tried, and I tried, and I tried, and after an hour and a half, I pulled myself out of the hole. And I was very happy, and I was glad that I did it. Here, here's a picture of me having fun. Just after I, you see me like that, that's me having fun. So after I, I went down and had some lunch and had a couple of beers, and it, really enjoying the time with my family, my dad, which I know he's not going to ever do something like that again, I've realized that I've lived in my comfort zone for many years. I had the next 10 to 15 years laid out in front of me in a work that I was really good at doing, but I didn't like, that I really wasn't happy doing that. And I started thinking if I want to keep myself in that comfort zone, if I want to continue doing what I was doing, that I was good at doing it, that I was going to be successful at doing it, but I wasn't happy. So I took a risk. I left the central bank and moved into a Ministry of Economy for six months before the president's term. I knew that after six months I was going to get fired. But I quite liked the job. So I quit my job, moved to that other job, and in six months, all the team got fired. Every single one of us. Well, except for me. So I was very happy with taking the risk. And after that, I realized that I should keep on taking risks. So if today I'm here in front of you, and I'm expressing my dreams, my ideas, who I am, what I went through, I'm risking you not being interested. If I love someone, I risk not being loved in return. If I live, I risk dying. But risks must be taken. The person who risks nothing, do nothing, have nothing, are nothing. They might avoid suffering and sorrow, but they cannot learn, they cannot feel, they cannot grow, they cannot change, they cannot love, they cannot live. This is something that really struck me. After this experience, I quit the Ministry of Economy again, and I moved to my dream job. I work in the advertisement industry, which is completely different from what I did before. It has nothing to do with risks, but I'm very happy at doing it. So, if I can leave you today with something, it's the following. The person who risks nothing, do nothing, have nothing, are nothing. So, only a person who risks is free. This sleep year, I challenge you that in that extra day that you have, take a risk. Thank you.